Hello, Huskies. Thomas Hammock. Uh, certainly excited to have uh, this, this group of men uh, that come talk to us today. Uh, just a very exciting group of former Huskies, uh, uh, pros, former NFL alums, uh, and I think it'll, it'll be a great time. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Huskies in a Pro panel as part of our 2020 Victor E. Bash. I will be leading tonight's panel. And with us, we have none other than Mike Turner, NIU Mid-American Conference Hall of Fame, running back, fifth-round draft choice by the San Diego Chargers in 2004, who went on to have a, a nine-year NFL career. Welcome, Mike. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. I got some great stories, so we'll, we'll get into that a little later. Okay, all right. <laughs> Next, we got Larry Inglis, two-time Burn Smith Leadership Award winner, one of the top defensive players in NIU history, also inducted to the NIU Hall of Fame, the highest draft choice in, in school history when he was elected 16th by the San Diego Chargers in 2009. Welcome, Larry. Happy to be here. Appreciate you guys having me. Good. Next, we got Mac Sharpin, three-time All-Mac, offensive lineman, two-time academic All-American, I think uh, you and myself are the only two-time academic All-Americans in NIU history. Okay. Yeah, that, that, there, we that, there we go. Let's go. That was good. On the field and in the classroom. <laughs> uh, was drafted in the second round by the, 2000, uh, by the Houston Texans in the 2019 draft. Welcome, Max. Appreciate you guys for having me. Go Huskies. Good. Go. Last but not least, we got Chad Beebe, who made the Minnesota Vikings team as a free agent. Wide receiver out of NIU in 2018. Always great to see you, Chad. I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks. Good. Well, we want to thank, first of all, we want to thank everyone for joining us and also remind everyone that we are here to help NIU athletics and student athletes uh, scholarships. So please head over to victorebash.givesmart.com to donate or participate in our online auction. The best thing we're going to do, we're going to make this kind of an open forum uh, we, I can have a chance to uh, ask questions. We can just go in order uh, from oldest to youngest. So that would be Mike, that would be Larry, yeah, Chad, and then, and then Max. <laughs> uh, so I'll ask a question. If you guys uh, you know, need me to repeat the question again, I, I can certainly do that. But we're going to talk about uh, your experience at NIU, uh, your transition from NIU to the pros, and, and some of the things that you may be doing afterwards. All right? Okay. All right, first question. All right? It's for Mike. How did your experience at NIU prepare you for your professional career and life after football? Uh, being at NIU uh, just taught me a lot about growing up being a man, you know. Uh, and as far as football-wise, you know, I felt like NIU was some of the toughest training that I had, you know. Like, once I got to the pros, it was like, as far as conditioning, training, working hard, that was that was second nature by that time. It was it, it was very much relaxed once I got to the pros. I feel like college was the hardest level as far as, you know what I'm saying, making sure you're going to school, being on time, and being, you know what I'm saying, got coaches checking on you, seeing if you're on, on class, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it was like, a, it was just tougher for that way, that training to, to develop in, inside of you to like, you know, if you want this in life, you have to go get it, you gotta train hard and get it everywhere you can. You know, we were we were the epitome of, of the hard way. We were, we were the hard way, uh, guinea pigs yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're still talking about it to this day but uh you know obviously i think you know the, the thing that that stands out to me about you and i i never told you this uh you know my sophomore year when i broke my ankle and then you played those two games the end of the season had like 600 yards i mm. really thought to myself how the, how the hell am i gonna beat this guy out the next two years you know? <laughs> and I, <laughs> I just think you know you obviously you're the heck of a talent uh yeah. and the heck of a player uh, and just uh, appreciate everything you, you, you've done for our university. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate that, man. Hey, Larry, talk to us about your experience. So um, my experience there at NIU um, did so much for me, um, not only for, for just transitioning me into the pros, but then just preparing me in many ways for everything that, that, that life would, would throw um, in general, um, from, from the standpoint of really learning how to sacrifice and, 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 and 
get through tough times. We had a we we had a couple a, a couple tough seasons there. Um, I remember on the field, um, and me personally, I remember um, just that period. Really, there was a there was just an additional level, of, like a second level of grit that that I got to during. I was I really say my my senior year there. My senior year played through a lot from the injury standpoint. Had had just come off of a um, of a uh, a torn pec during, that happened uh, in winter conditioning, and then broke my hand two times, my thumb two times during the season, and was was refusing to miss any games. I wasn't missing a dang snap. Um, so I think you know there was just so many memories, so many incredible people. Um, both both coaches, um, in addition to coaches, uh, teachers and staff and things like that, but then also players, like so many amazing people, amazing players that set such a great example for me, um, um, whether it been from a toughness standpoint, um, from a coachability standpoint, um, it was it was just a, a really uh, transformative time in many many ways for me, um, and I think it, it cultivated a lot of the principles and mentality that I still have to this day, and I take it with me and you know I took it with me into all of those additional chapters of my life. So it was um, it was definitely a um, an amazing time for me and a, and a critical time for me. Especially for the for, for the next chapters that would come after that. Good. Hey, Larry, talk to us. I know you talked about uh, learning from some of the older guys. Uh, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about some of those guys that you had the opportunity to to learn from. Yeah, you got you got Coach Moore there. That's that's uh, coaching uh, ends and linemen there, and um, he was one of the players that early on for me. Um, he was a senior when I came in. He was one of the players at the time that when I saw him get on the field from the defensive end position, playing with a level of ferocity and um, just a level of explosion and intensity, it, 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 it taught me something and it showed me something because I was coming from playing linebacker and playing linebacker, you got to read a lot more keys and all these things. And um at the defensive end position especially when you're referring to um to pass rushing and things like that it's it's go and you, you you're reading the linemen and you're reading you know keys at times within the offense on the way but the the first and foremost most important integral piece of that position is just get off and go and um so i think seeing players like him um, players like Vincent Reynolds, like those cats were the ones that really like showed me how to, to, to play the, the position and the type of intensity, intensity that it took. That's awesome. Chad, now you, you came and spoke to our team last year. And, uh, you know, I didn't really know your story uh, until you spoke to the team. Um, but if you could just tell uh, the fans, tell, tell Husky Nation a little bit about your story and, and your experience at NIU, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, no doubt. I think I, I kind of want to touch on what uh, Michael and Larry had already mentioned a little bit. And, and the biggest part of it was just kind of going into the man um, that I am today, you know, on those principles, uh, whether it's, you know, working hard um, and perseverance, things like that, you know. And I know my experience can definitely vouch for those things. Um, I didn't have a healthy season my whole career, you know, and it, it it was it was rough, you know, but um, the people, that's something I'll never forget. I mean, there's a, a bunch of guys that I still talk to and um, have really shaped, you know, who I am and friendships, um, coaches even too. Uh, you know, even our strength coach, Brad Orr, he, he stuck his neck out for me. And I'll be honest with you, he's, he's a big reason why I am where I am today, the Minnesota Vikings, you know, and uh, – um, so I owe him a lot, um, but um, like I said, just kind of re go back to the beginning, just those those uh, principles, um, and I know we're going to touch on it later, but the hard way and, and just giving everything you got 100% of the time, never giving up, um, work hard, persevere, and trust the process. You know, those are huge things um, that I picked up while I was there and has definitely carried on um, up to this point and 
will continue on because it's it's ingrained. So <laughs> awesome, yeah, awesome. So Max, you know, my first couple of weeks on the job, uh, you know, I remember just seeing you come in and work out, and then uh, Coach Devlin from the Texans came and worked you out, and I I was at that workout, and I thought to myself after spending you know five years in the NFL, I said that's the type of workout. Uh, were they were they were they very interested in drafting you? So just tell us about your experience, uh, NIU. Tell us about you know the transition a little bit into the National Football League. Yeah, I think uh, NIU uh, really helps. I think especially how uh, Mike and Larry commented on it. I mean, tra the transition in. Not everyone is at a program where hard work is instilled in you to that level that it was at NIU. I mean, you have to show up every single day and give it your best, give it your all, because that's what your teammates are relying on. And I think that was the biggest thing for me in the transition period that NIU taught me is I have to show up every day like I'm going to lose my job because someone else is right behind me coming to take it. And that's really the mentality you need in life, that you have to be the best at what you're doing every single day attempt that you give so i think that was the biggest thing for me good mike okay so so next week uh, i got coach novak um talking to our team on zoom zoom has been fantastic by the way uh, okay. but he's going he, he's going to talk to us about uh the history of the hard way and, mm. and i want to ask all you guys what does the hard way mean to you mike you go ahead and start man uh i'll, I'll say the hard way first it was like coming from North Chicago, period, I always felt the no like go. The no go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Come from there, I, we, I, I felt it was always the hallway. You know, what I'm saying we, we like come to NIU. We we didn't have the best facilities, you know. We we couldn't cry about anything. Like we don't have this, we don't have that. We had to work with what we had, you know. And uh, and I think the hallway was just fit perfect with us because we're gonna do it the hallway because other schools were kind of like ahead of us as far as getting facilities and you know and things like that in, inside the Mac and stuff but like we was like we're gonna practice we're gonna practice outside we're gonna practice in the snow we ain't got nothing you know it's, we, we don't have no bubble no nothing so <laughs> no sense of crying about it and then we you know Joe Novak had that instilled in us we're gonna work hard we're gonna work twice as hard as every other program if, if one thing we're gonna be the best shaped team on, on, on the field you know and uh and that, that's the hallway and we're gonna do it the hallway we're gonna we going to do it without that and still try to take over this conference. Cause we was, you know, we wasn't even winning at the time, you know, when we came in and I think, I don't know what y'all record was before that time, but I know. My, we was my, five and six and then six and five. Yeah. Okay. Six and five is like six. It just got better every, every, ever since every year that year. So every year after that. So okay. the hallway was proving itself year in and year out that we're getting better. We're getting better. We're getting better. We're getting yeah. better. It just, it, just putting that, that time and that hard work is going to pay off at the end. I'm gonna give you a plug, Mike. They they showing the Maryland game uh, on this Victor E. Bash, you know. So that 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 had to be a, I think the 2003 Maryland game. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Larry. Larry, tell us about the heart. We need we need the fans. We need a stadium pack like that again because that Maryland exactly game. Exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I tell them. You know, we we got we got to find Mike Turner. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we got another back from North Chicago, so we'll see how he turns out. Oh, Bondarius, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. He got All good right. blood, so we're going to see. All right. Larry, Larry, tell us about the hard way. Yeah, so um, I think that was, that, that was a big um, – it was, it, was, it, was, it was this mentality. It was like this chip, you know, this chip on the shoulder. And I remember, uh, um, like – I, I was training um, for the draft, and at at that time, I was uh, I was training um, with uh, this former defensive lineman uh, from I think it was the Panthers at the time. He played in like the early '90s. His name was Chuck Smith, and he went on to coach a little bit in the league. So some guys may may know him, but I remember when I was training with him, he was talking about one of the players um, at at I want to say it was the senior bowl that year and he was like yeah that kid was out there playing like he just grew up with 
you know, pimples all over his face his whole high school, his whole high school career. And he had to walk through school every single day getting clowned and made fun of by all the kids. And he just walked out there angry and played out there the whole game like he was just that, that, mm-hmm. that, 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 that pimple-faced, angry kid. And I think it's like that type of mentality. That's what it really meant to me the hard way. It was like we was mad. We was angry. Like, and at the time, I know it's different now. It's like because, you know, due to, you know, the success that came after the fact and some of the even the success from before, you know, of all of those years before, all of those struggles before of having that hard way mentality, it finally, you know, culminated into now, yeah, you do have the facilities. And then I remember a couple years um, after I graduated, graduated, I think it was probably like around 2009, 2010, the, the, the program really started getting national acclaim and, and being a nationally respected program. But prior to that, it was not. And I, I remember Mike's uh, senior year. So Mike's senior year was the year that I was getting recruited. And so I was a senior in high school at that time. And he was, it was the, it was the, the year that you guys beat Maryland and Alabama and so that was one season where there was a lot of press and, you know, uh, the Huskies' name was really ringing on a national scale and, and in a big way. And I remember that season, I think we had got to like 10, like the, on the national rankings, 10 or 11. But outside of that, prior, prior to, you know, 2010, 11, there was no real respect on a national level for the program. and definitively there were no physical you know amenities if you will for the program to really thrive from the standpoint of having the indoor facility and you know having the best workout facilities and and any of that so the hard way was really that mentality that we was going to do that much more despite maybe having less at times and it was like that chip that was that was on the shoulder of all the guys for all of those tough gritty cats that got created from that mentality of maybe having less. We weren't that silver silver spoon program, but the idea was to take that tough, rough, and tumble mentality into all of those 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 encounters that we had with teams and programs that were a little bit more, you know, well 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 fed. That those those silver spoon teams, if you will. And, and for our conference, that was most of the teams in the conference had a better, maybe they weren't better nationally recognized, but at least they probably had a better facility. So it was, that was something else to be mad about. Like, exactly was, right. You know what I mean? So it was exactly like that, right. our way was like really that mentality of like having that chip on the shoulder of just walking in and being, and, and, and being pissed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Chad, you, yes, you, you talked a little bit about your, your injuries and, and, and some of those things of dealing with adversity is, is kind of ingrained into the hard way philosophy. So tell us about what the hard way means to you. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think I got a preface first, and I think Max would agree with me. But, <laughs> I mean, compared to Michael and Larry, I mean, they're the ones that really set the path, man, and, and set those things in motion because we, we had the indoor, you know, we had the clothes, we had the jerseys. I mean, <laughs> So in that in that case, we didn't really have it the hard way, but that mentality, I promise you, has stuck around, um, and that has carried through. There's no doubt about it. Every team I I was on, um, we all had that mentality, and I know it's continued. You know, and um, it was, you know, going into those 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 bigger games, the the bigger teams, right? The Iowa's, Ohio State's, and the Purdue's, whatever. I mean, um, our mentality was, hey. Or you're going to pay us to come kick your butt. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> um, you know, but for me personally, the hard way, uh, I'll give you a, a short story here. Because mine was, it was different. You know, I wasn't drafted. I wasn't even a free agent right away, to be honest with you. I was I was a mini camp invite. You know, I was that extra camp body. They just threw out there and said, hey, you know, we need another guy to run run some routes and, and catch a few footballs. <laughs> And they try to they try to save legs for them draft picks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't good enough for me. <laughs> right, right. You know, hey, I was just look happy for the opportunity. But I, you know, going into that 
that situation, I, I really believe the hard way and that mentality helped me. Um, and going into there, I was like, look, I got nothing to lose. Um, I, I know how to work hard. I know how to persevere, you know, like you have mentioned. And I, I mentioned earlier, I went through a lot of injuries. Um, still can't really seem to, to get rid of that bug. But, you know, um, to finish that story, I just I, – I, I was going to meetings on time and, and doing all the little things right, you know. And then um, there was another guy who was already signed as a free agent in that room as a wide out, and he was showing up to meetings late, you know, was lazy in practice. Uh, and those things, they don't, they don't make it, you know, and he ended up getting cut and I replaced him, you know, they signed me a free agent after that mini camp. Uh, and those are the, those principles are so huge, you know, and that's in life too. You know, that's just a small picture of what it can do for you as far as, far as hard work and, and, um, doing things the hard way, being nitty gritty, you know, having that chip on your shoulder, like Michael was saying, or I'm sorry, Larry was saying, and, uh, um, you know, doing things, the little things the right way, you know, Good. For me, it's worked out so far and I know that, that it's going to continue to work out. And, uh, um, so yeah. Good. Hey, Max, your, your position is, is built on the hard way. You can't get around that. You got five guys uh, trying to work in unison, but uh, just tell us a little bit about your experience uh, at NIU uh, in, in dealing with the hard way culture. Yeah. I mean, like Chad said, um, Obviously, we didn't go through uh, the no facilities or anything like that. I think for us, the hard way was really a little bit uh, different. The chip on our shoulder was a little bit different. Um, where the, the best thing I can think of to relate to it is, uh, like Larry was saying, we were nationally recognized when I came into the program. We, when I came in, we had been to four straight MAC championships. Like we were, we were at the top of the conference. But every single year in the pre-conference rankings, we were ranked third. Toledo was always ahead of us. Western Michigan was always ahead of us. Mm -hmm. All these schools that we beat consistently were always ahead of us. It and still so hasn't that was, changed. That was, that, was changed. Our chip. That, that was our chip. I mean, we went into every season proving that we were still the top dog. We were still the ones you had to come in and beat. And – that, that was our chip for working hard every single day. You come in because you know we're going to be the best guys on the field when we go out there. And that, that was our chip. And I think the hard way for us was trying to – making sure that we lived up to that standard because the guys that came before us, they set that standard with the hard way, really going through all that. They gave us all of this stuff. We're not going to take it for granted. We're going to try to improve on what they gave us. Good. Well, we got a, a question from Twitter. You know, this, this, this whole thing is built on social media. So, Max, <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm stick with you. Uh, what is your best Husky game memory? Oh, um, I think I'll have to go with uh, the uh, 2018 MAC championship. Um, we were down going into the game. We weren't supposed to win at all. Buffalo was undefeated. Uh, it's, you know, it's my senior year. I'm, you know, riding high going to a Mac championship again for the first time in a couple of years. And, uh, we were down 29 to 10 with about, I think it was like nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. And I'm just telling guys like, don't give up. We got this. We got this. Don't worry. And lo and behold, Marcus Childers throws for 300 yards, two touchdowns in the, in the fourth quarter. We come back, beat them 30 to 29. So that awesome. Was, Unbelievable. Awesome. You know, offensive linemen, you know, you're, people don't see the stats that you guys have. So your memories are more truly uh, team oriented. And uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what a great game and uh, what a way to go out, you know, as a, as a MAC champion your senior season. Chad, tell us about, you know, your best, your best memory from Husky State, from, from being a Husky. Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint one. Um, Obviously, a lot of those big wins and and going into the the locker room after those and celebrating with the guys. I mean, you know that that song that we always playing and just going crazy in the locker room. Uh, those are what you way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are things you just never forget. You know, I mean, it's really hard to pinpoint one, but I, I guess I could point out the 
the MAC championship my sophomore year, 2014. Um, kind of clawed our way there that year and um, ended up winning the game. Uh, and again, the celebration, you know, afterwards, it's just again nothing that you just don't forget those things. So yeah, they they certainly uh, up the ante on the celebrations after after victories now. I don't know when when this new tradition started, but uh, I'm certainly enjoying it. Yeah. It's fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget it. Well, good, Larry. Talk about your your best memory. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to point out one best memory, but a, a couple things that um really stand out for me. And in all honesty, I'm not the guy that remem remembers the, the, the game and the score and even some of the instances, the, the wins or the losses. I'm, um, I, I have memories more so centered around moments and like what the people meant that were around um, me at those moments. And some of the best moments for me were, were homecoming games. Uh, just purely because, you know, that that having that Husky community of like all those previous players that I played all of those those years with before, those guys that we missed, you know, over the years that we have maybe haven't seen in a year or two. So so everybody coming back and kind of getting to put on, you know, our best performance in front of our in front of our previous teammates and previous brothers and close friends. So there was that. Um, that was always big for me. And hey, Larry, uh, Larry, I know you you polish and you talk <laughs> well. You know, did you have a six uh, sack game? Is that is that true? Yeah. So so yeah, I it, it was a five sack game. Five sack. <laughs> I mean, that got to be your best memory. So, I mean, come so on. that 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 memory actually really was good because on top of the five sacks, we ended up winning that game. And not only yeah. five sacks, but even even I don't know for me. That it, I might have to say that better than the five sacks, I had a touchdown that game, which was something that was pretty rare. That was yeah. rare for for for. A now just remember, you're talking to a former Husky. You're not talking to the media, you know. So it's okay to talk about the five sacks and the and scoring the touchdown. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. I mean, that was a, that was an incredible memory for, for sure. That was definitely a challenging season, I would say. But that that memory uh, of that game that was uh, that was one to be remembered without a doubt. Awesome. Um, also, another uh, memory that's kind of funny that that uh, has kind of been marinating around in my head a little bit is is the uh, the chains. How we used to, how Coach Novak used to to, to put the chains on the um, stadium oh, on the gate, <laughs> lock the gate. <laughs> we had a lock the gate game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hey, I can, I can tell you what, we locked the gates uh, for Illinois State, and, and, and our players were jacked up about it, you know, lock the gates and don't let them out. Yeah, that, that was like a different level of hype running out onto the field when we had the lock the gates game. Exactly lock right. That, lock their butts in. Exactly <laughs> right. Hey, Mike, yeah. favorite, favorite Husky memory? Favorite Husky memory. Uh, we talked about Maryland already. Uh, just seeing the, the fans and stuff like that, packing packing the house out like that, showing up for that game and, and us pulling out a win. But I don't think I ain't had the pleasure of uh, having some rings like these guys do, you know, being in MAC championships and stuff. So uh, I had to do the Alabama game, going down to Alabama, beating them guys down there. That was just a great team win, you know. I had a, I had a good game. Uh, uh, that's the hard way. We going out there, that chip on our shoulder again. <laughs> We didn't, we didn't care who he was playing against. We, we felt like we had a chance. You know, we had a chance to win every game we were in. And uh, it was just – everybody was just making plays that game. You know, defense played great. You know, offense, we put up enough points to win. You know, we didn't light up the scoreboard, but we, we did enough to win the game. Uh, kept their offense off the field, uh, controlled the game. And we just felt like we just handled them the whole game. I was like, this is Alabama. Like, what's next? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, then we go out, you know. Then we all beat Iowa, uh, uh, Iowa State after that. So um, yeah. that, was, that was a great season. But yeah, definitely, I would, I would have to pick Alabama beating them. It's probably with my greatest memory. I'll give you my greatest memory of watching you play. It was my senior season. We playing Miami of Ohio, and they got Ben Roethlisberger. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, he threw. I think he threw for five hundred yards. Yeah, he yeah he was like he was lighting it up. He was lighting it up. Hey, that run game. 
you got to be able to run the ball. Yeah, we come. We can come back running. I end up having five touchdowns. Uh, 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 two hundred some yards rushing. Yeah, and we, we we pulled it off because they had, all the hype was on on Ben. But you know, we we're not there. Just had to handle them too. You know, like you exactly said, like right. Max said, like every every year. It's always a program that's better than us, but we got to go out there and beat them and show them ourselves, you know. Exactly right. All right, you know, um, I'm going to stick with you, Mike. You know, everybody thinks the NFL is so all the glitz and the glamour. You know, <laughs> having coached there for five years, I know I know the real deal now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college, I had no idea. You're right, um, right. But no, just talk no. to us. You know, what's the biggest difference between college and, and the pros? Oh, uh, the biggest difference, of course, the speed. The speed and the knowledge. It's all about speed and knowledge. Speed and knowledge. Know, know, knowing what you're doing and, and doing it fast and doing it right. That's what's, that's what's going to win ball games. Uh, but when I was first got there, I, I wasn't, like, intimidated. You know, I was just like, okay, this is supposed to be – okay, you're from, supposed to be from Ohio State. You're supposed to be from Michigan. You're supposed to be from – but I don't see nothing special, like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's what I feel. Uh, but one thing that did shock me, though, like my first time, uh, you know, when we had like the mini camps, you know, where it was like full contact with no pads on. We got no equipment on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got you, you know, got spiders on. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got spiders on. They, and you know, the starters go first. They out there full go. I'm like, whoa. This, <laughs> that was probably the most, the most thing that shocked me about the NFL. Like, they, these boys fight for their jobs out here. They, they exactly. really fight with no pads on, yeah. But other than that, yeah, every, you know, everything else, I'm pretty much, we're gonna, you're going to work for what you get, you know? So, exactly. yeah. They, Let, oh, there was a crazy still in us, so we, I was cool with it. Larry, tell us what's the biggest difference for you, college uh, and the uh, pros. Yeah, I, I would say one of the biggest differences for sure was um, um, for, from a mental standpoint, um, the NFL. Now I was playing playing a different position as well, but um, the f like overall football knowledge, I think, is and 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 acumen, if you will, in the NFL, it's the cream of the crop. And so, from um, a mental standpoint, I think there's so much work that gets underestimated that 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 goes into that finished product that you know, all the fans get to watch on Sunday or Monday night. And um, that that true level of a professional going to work every day and 80, 90 percent of 80 to 90 percent of it is mental. It's about it's about knowing where you need to be in certain situations. And not only just that part part piece of the mental, but also the psychological um, mental piece is huge. And so I think there's just so many more, so many additional elements that, that are at play, if you will. And I think those are the things that kind of set the great ones apart that are actually able to go into the NFL and actually be successful at that uh, level as well. Whereas I think in um, high level collegiate athlete, off, athletics, um, maybe with you know, playing fast and being an amazing athlete, you know, you can be the top two or three percent of of collegiate athletics, right? But to be that top, you know, two to three percent or five percent um, in the NFL, there's a lot of mental and psychological um, wherewithal that I think players need to have, and that's kind of what sets what sets it apart. Good. Chad, you know, I can speak from experience. I, I've made a lot of free agent calls to get guys up to minicamp. So I know how difficult uh, that that role to make a team is. What was the biggest adjustment for you from, from college to the pros? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely what they've been saying. I mean, speed and knowledge, no doubt, changes. I mean, it's more, faster, um, a lot to learn. But – I think also I want to touch on um, college. You kind of – there's a little bit of hand-holding, right? Like make sure you're doing this all the time, blah, blah, blah. And yes, then, yes. Yeah, when you get to the NFL, I mean, that expectation, that's that's already set in place. Like you better be doing this or you're not going to have a job, you know. I mean, you don't 
if you don't come into camp in shape, you're going to get cut. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's your job now, and you got to take ownership of that. Uh, um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing, to be what's some of the advice? What's some of the advice you got from your dad? Yeah, well, a lot of what we've already talked about, you know, to be honest with you, the hard way, my dad kind of instilled that in that, you know, that into me as a young kid, um, that never give up attitude. You know, sometimes things aren't going to go your way, but, you know, if you can push through the grind, push through the adversity, you're, it's going to end up better on the other side. You know, it may not always look the way you want it to, but you're going to be better for it. And uh, um, that's the biggest advice that he's given me in my life, you know, and that definitely correlates to football too, but also life. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Max, biggest difference, especially up front. That's a that's a big adjustment. Tell us about the biggest mm -hmm. difference. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing uh, is the little details and everything you have to think about, uh, both you know technique wise and just knowing your opponent. Um, you know, film study in the NFL is completely different from what I did in college, and I think that's the biggest thing I've taken from it. Uh, you know, I mean. These past few weeks with the the Zoom calls that I've been on uh, for the NFL, I mean, half of what we've been doing is going over, you know, the opponents we're going to play in preseason and, and regular season because we're not going to have that time when we get back to focus on that because we're going to be focused on getting in shape and making sure that everyone on the team is actually ready to go, uh, obviously, because we haven't been together for OTAs. So I think the, the details that you have to put in and you have to think about it's a huge difference. And then, I mean, obviously the players are uh, all at the highest caliber, like everybody Correct. on this call. No. Correct. Hey, guys, Max, uh, Max, tell people, tell people, because I don't think people understand, tell them about the volume of offense that you have to learn week to week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the, the playbook, uh, one week you could be running – you know, this amount of plays, and then the next week just scrap that, and here comes another <laughs> So, <laughs> good luck. Yes. Good luck. Better learn know, it. I, I always thought that was the toughest thing uh, in the NFL for offensive linemen. And so some of the, some of the things that we, we talked about when we were in the draft process was finding linemen that were extremely intelligent. And mm -hmm. uh, you being a two-time academic All-American, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that played a big part in you, you having the ability – to have the early success that you had. Yeah, it's definitely helped out for sure. Uh, that's, you know, anytime you can uh, learn everything and, you know, put it, put it to use, that's always going to help you. I'm going to tell you guys, uh, you know, my first year in the pros, the biggest difference that I noticed, and, and you guys can, can comment on that, is, uh, you know, in college you used to having 115 guys or 120 guys on the team. Mm -hmm. Well, after that fourth preseason game, when they make that cut, you know, I remember thinking, how are we going to practice? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no way we're going to be able to practice. You used to have mm -hmm. twice as many people, and you get out there, you looking around, Mike, you say, who, who going to take these reps? <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Hey, Max, I, Max, I'm going to stay with you. Uh, talk about the toughest player you had to go against. Uh, last season, who was your toughest opponent? Uh, I'm gonna go Grady Jarrett, uh, the oh, Atlanta okay. Falcons. Rise up! <laughs> <laughs> that, that man is quick. I tell you what. <laughs> no, he is good. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, Grady Jarrett. That's a good one. Chad, what, what, what's, give me a DB that that gave you fits. Yeah. Um, well, last year is a little tough. I only played in three games, and then I, I ended up having surgery on my ankle, but I'll go back to my rookie year um, going up against Darius Slay, Detroit Lions, uh, really good DB. It, I mean, just even if you beat him, his reaction time, he's on you, you know, in a matter of seconds, but uh, um, I'll go with him. Larry, talk, talk to me about the best player you went against. All right, so, so, so I don't know if I, – I, I, I can't necessarily call him definitively the best player that I went against. But I gotta, I gotta, you know, say this guy's name because it's probably a little bit funny. But when I, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was my first year in the league. 
we um, toward the end of the season, I think he may have even been retired and came back out of retirement, like because we, we needed we needed to pick up uh, an additional uh, tackle, and so we had John Runyon on our team for I would say probably the last like at least like the last half of the season. He's massive. And, Oh my goodness. So just even going against him in practice, that was the one offensive tackle that I ever played against that just made me feel like a little boy. And he used to getting ready for practice. And that and I think he played, played like 15, 20 years in the league. So he was like the old school brute force, like old school lineman. And so he used to wrap up his wrists. I swear, like he had. The, the tape it was just regular tape, but it was just so much tape that it, it was it was it was like a cast on each of his hands. So when he would punch, and we were we were really working our hands a lot at these times. And most of the time, when you got a lineman that punches a lot, you can swipe his hands and get away from his hands, and you know you can that that creates uh, an opportunity for you do, to do a lot of moves on him. But his punch was so fierce, so strong, even at that time, and I think he must have been in his late 30s at the time, that once his paws got out on you, it was a wrap, and there was no getting free of it. So that was one of the one of the players that I played against that was memorable that I just remember that shock of what that felt like to have his hands hit you. And that wasn't any – it wasn't a hit. It was just – it wasn't a hit like with – like you get hit by somebody with the full ferocity of the helmet, the shoulder pads, the whole thing. It was just the punch of his hands. And so that was one person that, that really st- sticks out for me, um, and especially for me at, a, at an early time when I was a young player. Good. Mike? Uh, man, I played, a lot, I played against a lot of great guys. Uh, uh, I, think, I think one guy one guy that I don't think I got the best of, like I broke a tackle from him or anything, I think Patrick, Patrick Willis. Patrick Willis, uh, I mean, he's such a great form tackler, man. I, I, I got I to gotta go back and watch some tape, but I don't think I broke any tackle from him. When he got your hands on you, I think it was a wrap. You're going to the ground. <laughs> but I played, there's a lot of guys I'm glad I didn't have to go up here, like some D-line, like some Saps, Warren Saps, and, you know, those guys, like Grady Jarrett. I'm glad I had to go against them. I, had to well, Aaron, I, I mean, I tell you, the, the toughest guy I've seen was Aaron Donald. I yeah, mean, <laughs> <laughs> he hurt. He hurt my running back and the quarterback on the same play. <laughs> this guy, this guy is phenomenal. You know, I think that's the biggest thing people don't realize is how advanced players are, how technique sound they are, how hungry they are. I mean, how athletic they are. Um, that was the biggest thing that I realized. The speed. You know, you guys talked about the speed of the game. I remember my first preseason game. I, I couldn't even follow the play, Mike. I'm looking like. <laughs> hey, I know it's going to the right, but I don't see nothing going on. And then obviously, the game slows down. Yeah, it's slow. <laughs> it, it slow. It slows down for coaches too. I was like, oh man, I ain't gonna be able to do this. Hey, what uh, year? What year was your first year? Two thousand fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. Okay. Yeah. So we we played we played the Falcons. Uh, when you was there, one uh one year we went down there when the new stadium opened up. Yeah, when I was working. Yeah, when I was doing the media thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mike, a question for the group. Mike, you start. What player, coach, or person had the biggest impact of your career? Uh, well, I gave it up to Jay Bullworth for recruiting me to NIU. Remember Jay? Hey, nice. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Bullworth, Matt Canada. Oh, he got me ready through that freshman year. And then uh, DeAndre, DeAndre Smith took it over from there. It took me to the next level as far as being a running back, having looking at things a little bit differently um, than what I've been doing, and uh, you know, definitely, you know, and all that's on the Joe Novak. So I give my, I give that credit to them. But my, uh, I was Marty Schottenheimer in the NFL too. I give him credit to. Hey Mike, you know people don't remember. You know they they brought all you guys in uh, to to beat me out. It was you. It Man, was. It was uh, it was, it was Jason, Jason <laughs> Hawkins. It was Kevin Woods. It was Dewan Johnson. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sitting here. I'm I'm only a year ahead of you guys, but everybody everybody came in to beat me out. And you know yep. that that training camp, it was only me and you that survived. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? We said if we survive, we gonna play. You, you know, play. we 
gonna play. They even brought a, a kill over from defense. Remember they called they him did. Play. They brought him over for one day and then said, "Oh, he's the best back we got." <laughs> oh goodness, Larry, talk about the, the, the player or the, or the coach that had the biggest impact on your career. Yeah, so um, I would say that um, Coach Mike Sabok, and then um, also my my senior year coach uh, Coach Jerry Kill, uh, you know, had had a lasting impact for me. Coach Sabok. He rode me harder than you could have believed my freshman year. Like I really, I thought like, dang, I don't know if I'm gonna cut it. <laughs> the way the way Coach <laughs> Coach Sabak rode me my freshman year, because I had I was I was I was a linebacker coming back from high school, a linebacker, and he was teaching me to play DN. Him along with Travis, and he rode me so hard and yelled at me so much. I was really sitting there thinking like, dang. <laughs> from, from the sounds of him, I don't know if I'm gonna cut it. But um, he um, he he taught me a lot. He he taught me how to uh, to truly play that position. And one of the biggest things that helped me too um, was he really taught me how to watch film and get prepared for um, these tackles that I would play against uh, from a pass rush standpoint. So I think uh, Coach Sabox, you know. Tough love in the beginning got me prepared to be, you know, and, and, and positioning me to, to have success um, later on in my career after that. You know, I really started having success my sophomore year on the field, sophomore, junior, and senior year. And um, he laid the groundwork for that early on um, by not letting me slide the, the slightest bit. Um, and then um, Coach Kill, he, he came in um, – it was only my final season there that I I spent with Coach Kill, but um, I think just his mentality and he he was an incredible incredible uh, motivator, and I think he did a, a a great job coming in that year as a new coach, really getting the team to kind of kind of cement itself around him and his staff and. The, the mentality that he was bringing at the time. And so um, I think he did a good job with that, with, with the transition um, um, after, you know, f- for such a long period of time, us having so much co- love for Coach Novak. It, it's tough for um, a new coach to come in in a situation like that when there's been a, um, a, a, a an extremely long tenured um, coach. Um, so I think um, Coach Kill did a, a – a really great job with that transition when he was there. So. Exactly. I saw Coach Kill. Uh, I worked for him for, for eight weeks at Minnesota and saw oh, yeah. the same transition. And uh, I still talk to him to, his, to this day. He called me last week about some things. And, uh, you know, what a great uh, man. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed him. You know, unfortunately, I had to go to the, to the, to the bad side. I left Minnesota and went to Wisconsin. So, Hey, Chad, tell us about the person that uh, had the biggest impact uh, for you. Yeah, um, I don't know if I can name one, uh, but I got two. And uh, Tommy Lee Lewis, he was a—he's kind of the same player I was, um, obviously a little older than me, but he's a slot receiver, punt returner. Um, and that guy, man. His workmanship, attitude, uh, nose to the grind every day. I mean, he never took a playoff uh, in practice and games. He was always on top of his stuff, truly. Um, I loved his mentality and the way he carried himself on and off the field. Um, And uh, we still talk today, but uh, I appreciate him so much, you know. And I got to name one other person, too. I've kind of already mentioned him, but, you know, I was injured a lot. I mean, I had surgery on my arm, my my a finger, my knee, I mean, AC joint sprains, a whole bunch of things. I could go through a, a whole list of them. Um, but, you know, so I spent a lot of time in the, in the training room and in the, in the weight room. And Brad Orr, our strength coach, uh, when I was there, he played a huge role in, you know, developing me into the player I was, trying to keep me on the field as best as possible. Um, but he ended up uh, – and I didn't know this until I got here to Minnesota, but one of the regional scouts here, his name's Blaine, and he came up to me and kind of gave me the the story. But, 
you know, long story short, Coach Short kind of stuck his neck out for me. And because uh, Blaine called him in the whole recruiting process, you know, uh, trying to find guys to sign as free agents, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Coach Short, he, uh, he said, you know, have you, have you looked at DB's film yet or talked to him, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, we, we took a look at him and um, we like him, but worried about injuries. And, and Coach just said, look, he's come back better than he was before every single time, you know. And long story short, they ended up giving me that, that invite in, you know. And so I had my opportunity. And long story short, I'm, I'm here in Minnesota still. And, um, you know, that I owe him a lot. I really do. He stuck his neck out for me, you know. And um, those things are um, – can't ask for much more than that. Hey, I'll I tell you a quick story, Chad. I, I work with, uh, with Kubiak, Dennison, and uh, Brian Periani uh, oh, yeah. in Baltimore. So we all came into Baltimore at the same time. Okay. And uh, you, you're around a great offensive staff. Oh, no doubt. We got some great coaches. We yeah. can't wait for this year, man. We can't exactly wait. Exactly right. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, obviously, I got to be biased. So, you know, I wish you personally the most <laughs> success. Um, but I'm in Illinois. You, you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Max. Hey, Max, you, uh, you left a lasting impression with, with, a, with a bunch of guys on our team. Uh, with, you know, Graydon Patton and, and Marcus Cox and some – and some guys, and just tell us about some of the people that left the impact with you. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest one, not many guys go through their whole college career with the same position coach, uh, and I did. And I think that was a, a really big thing for me, uh, Coach Tripodi. Um, I mean, just building a relationship over five years is a really incredible thing to go through. And uh, when you're a young player – you come in, you think you know everything, you think you're a hot shot, all that, you know, coming out of high school, and you really get uh, humbled pretty quickly. Um, and I think he was, uh, he was the guy that pushed me through some tough times when I was young and when I was redshirting and didn't really have the confidence my freshman year that I probably should have, um, looking back on it. And he, he always believed in me. He always pushed me to be the best I could be. And, uh, you know, to get me to where I am today. So I think that's, that's the biggest one uh, for me is uh, Coach Tripodi, just because of the lasting relationship that, that we'll have. Good. Max, I'm going to stick with you because you, you're the newest. Um, you, you, got, you know, they got a thing in the locker room. You know, I don't know how they do it with the Texans, but in Baltimore, you know, with the rookies, you have to get up, name, where you from, signing bonus, right? So you, so you got the newest money of the group. So what was the, what was the first thing you bought, uh, you know, with your signing bonus? Uh, I bought a truck. So nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What kind? Uh, I got a 2019 Dodge Ram. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I, I moved to Texas and needed, a, needed something to drive around in. I figured, you know what, big dude, I need a truck. So. All right. Chad, tell us about, you know, when you got them, uh, them game checks, them real game checks, not those practice squad. Uh, check. Uh, <laughs> tell us something say, you bought with it. I was gonna say, what signing bonus? I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, my goodness, shoot! I, <laughs> I'm just saving every penny. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> smart, smart. I haven't really right. bought too too much, you know. I just just saving every penny, man. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hey, Larry. You know, you're the highest draft pick in NIU's history. Uh, so I don't want to hear no political answer. We want to know. Incredibly, <laughs> incredibly, it was a Benz. It was a Benz. It was a Benz. It was a Benz. Regrettable. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. You, still, you still got it? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. And and I and I sold it two years. I bought it brand new and sold it two years later and lost a whole bunch of money and then learned my lesson. <laughs> All right, I guess I guess it's my turn now, right? Are y'all still there? I can hear you. Yeah, mine's uh, Chrysler Chrysler three hundred, Chrysler three hundred, and uh, and some furniture and some furniture from my apartment. Living in San Diego, I didn't have being a fifth round pick. I you know, Larry, you know how how expensive it is out there. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I I couldn't do too much being a fifth round draft pick. I couldn't get too crazy with it. <laughs> Hey, 
With Mike, we got to hit him with that second contract money. Hey, no doubt. Hey, hey, Mike. Because he's getting off too easy. (laughs) Hey, 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 Mike, you know, I I don't know if you remember this, but you got me tickets to two games. One was in San Diego. I think when we went to the Poinsettia Bowl, you got me tickets. And then the second one was uh, at Indianapolis. And Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was doing in Indianapolis at the time, but in the fourth quarter, you broke a 70-yard run. And I was thinking to myself, this man is about to get paid. So <laughs> when you got your second contract <laughs> with the Falcons, what did you buy? What did I buy, man? Uh, Benz. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the popular car. Um, I bought a couple, you know, obviously, I think uh, it took, I'll a while, it took you, me a while to get a house. It took me a while to get a house. So I bought the, I bought the car first. Yeah, that you know that that's obviously not uh, smart uh, financial planning, uh, <laughs> but we'll talk about that at another time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my five years in the NFL, you know, I, I had to have all these talks with these rookies. You know, mm-hmm. guys come in undrafted free agent. Listen, this money is not what you think. Mm-hmm. You know, and you try to explain it to them, uh, but you know. Obviously, build, buying a house first would, would be great, and mm-hmm. then a car. But you you got to do what you got to do. You got to enjoy it. You're right. All right, Mike, Mike, this for you. So, obviously, school pride is a big thing, right, in the pros. Yeah. Um, do people know NIU and NIU football uh, on the teams that you played on? No. no. They have no idea what NIU was when I got there. No idea. Wow. But they started paying attention to it, though, after that. They, they tease about it now with me. They, they, they still watch uh, Mac football. Matching. Yeah, matching. Hey, we, hey, prime time TV. You're right. But they start playing on Thursday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, whatever, and they're like, matching. Got some matching. They'll always send me a text. <laughs> hey, Larry, when you got drafted, did, did they know where you was from? Well, yeah, because Mike had already laid the groundwork there uh, in San Diego. So so I was coming from Mike Mike Turner's alma mater, so they, they had to know. But um, it, it, I think – it was probably a year or two after I got there that NIU really, at that point, the team was really, really doing well. And then it became this thing where when someone would ask you what school you went to or where you came from, oh, oh, okay. And then everybody knew it, especially after that Orange Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at that point, it was like, you know, nationwide acclaim at that point. But, no, early on – um they they did know, but more than likely it was only due to um to 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 it being Mike's alma mater. So they had to they had to respect it. Chad, tell us about the Vikings. The guys in the in the locker room know about NIU. Yeah, I mean, by now, I mean, this, a lot of people know about it. I mean, in my opinion, the guys that I know in, in our locker room, they all know NIU. Um, for example, I mean, we brought brought up the uh, um. Oh, shoot, the the Orange Bowl, sorry. Um, Florida State, Dalvin Cook, you know, running back that we got here. Oh, yeah. So I had conversations with him. I mean, you guys know at this point, you know. Mm. <clears throat> hey, Chad, I, I, I'm going to stick with you for a minute um, yeah. because I, I, I've had an opportunity to play at that new stadium. So besides the Vikings Stadium, what, what's been the loudest stadium that, you, that you've been in? Yeah, shoot, Minnesota is loud, but uh, – um, I'd probably have to go with Century Link Field, Seattle. It gets really loud in that stadium. I mean, you <laughs> it gets ringing bad, you know. Um, so you better be on your P's and Q's as an offense. Otherwise, you're going to be jumping off sides all day. Um, but I'd have to go with Century Link. Max, loudest stadium you've been in? Uh, I'm going to have to go Monday night against uh, the Saints down there. That was – That's rock. a loud one, too. Yeah, first game. Mike, you know that one. That's a loud one. Yeah, that's a loud one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They get that crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. That was that was a cool experience. That was first uh, regular season game too. So you, you know everyone was. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what, what was the score? What was the final score of that game? <laughs> uh, we ended up losing on a fifty-two yard field goal or something at the end. Oh, okay. it was close. Okay, yeah. the blow it. <laughs> I, I can tell you. I can tell you my experience. A Sunday night at Pittsburgh, Ravens Steelers. Unbelievable. Can't hear anything. Kansas City was loud, too. Mm-hmm. I got to give it up for Kansas City. Kansas City loud, Mike. Yeah, yeah, Kansas City is loud, yeah. 
Um, Loudest one for you, Mike. Loudest stadium. Uh, Seattle. 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 Yeah. I'm gonna tell you a sleeper stadium, Houston. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, that's a it sleeper. Is. When they, they roll them, that team is good. When they roll, they close that. When that roof is closed, it gets it gets loud in there. Yeah, yeah. That is true. Yeah. It does get loud. It's yeah. always closed now. They don't open that thing up. It's always closed. <laughs> I never see it open. I never see it open. <laughs> All right, I got one last question for everybody in the group. We'll start with you, Mike. Just tell us, what was your first professional experience walking into your first uh, game? You know, how did that feel, uh, the emotions that was going on? You know, just tell, walk us through that, that you know, that, that feeling you had. Oh, uh, that's what, nervous feeling? Oh, man, I was so nervous. I was so nervous. Uh, and, then, and it's only being preseason, too. And, uh, so you out there just nervous, and you're just like, all right, this is it. It's showtime. I got to – when it's my time to go, you know, I got to show that I'm worthy to be here. Because, you know, like I said, it was, I, they had no high value in me as far as investment-wise, but I was a fifth-round pick. So I had, to, I had to make do with what I had to do. Uh, so, you know, that, that was – that was that emotion was like no other. But then uh, I guess when I really felt it was the first – was the first uh, game that we had on the road, uh, regular season game. It was week one, and we had to go to Houston. And the flyover, you know, I never experienced oh. that. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 so when I said when they had the flyover, they're like, oh, wow. I'm like, I'm in the NFL. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, just a little, it's just the little things that's different, you know what I'm saying, that would trigger like, this is the show. This is the show of all shows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And things like that. And your first time playing on Monday night, and they play the music before the game, you know, to get the Correct. crowd. Like, yeah, your stuff like that. It's just little stuff like that, yeah. Larry, tell us about the experience uh, for you. Yeah, it's, it, Mike is right. It's a lot of uh, those, those little details. Um, but, yeah, funny enough, I think the first game that I played actually was it, – it, it, was, it was either a Sunday night or a Monday night, but I remember it was up in Oakland. And um, there was definitely a lot of nervousness in that. Um, uh, again, just like Mike said, you want to prove that you're worthy of being on that stage. Um, and it, it was the actual first regular season game, not not a preseason game. so. I remember feeling like that was truly, truly um, the stage, if you will. And it was at night. It was under it was under the lights. So uh, it was definitely a, memor a memorable moment and uh, a lot of emotions in it because it at that point was something that I had. It, it was a it was a lifelong goal of, of being there and being on that stage. So for that to happen, there was a lot of excitement. It was it was um a surreal moment but then also a moment where there was there there was some nerves involved for sure because it's it's like you I, like i remember me at that time i really had that mentality of of really wanting to prove that i was worthy of being there no good chad tell us about your experience uh yeah, I feel like I got to point out this new stadium that they got up here in Minnesota. I mean, they do – when we got Sunday night or Monday night games, they turn all the lights out. You know, they make it like a whole thing with a light show and uh, fireworks going. Um, they got that guy that beat the drum and everybody oh, uh, yeah. clapping their yeah. hands. I've, I've been there and done that. <laughs> <laughs> they get that thing so loud. And Max, you, you're coming here this year, right? I think you guys are. First preseason game. Yeah, but uh, that's an experience. But to be honest with you, I got to go all the way back to the beginning. My, my first preseason game, my rookie year, we were in Denver. Um, and, you know, my whole mentality, to be honest with you, from OTAs to training camp to that point was I'm at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> all right. I got nowhere to go but up. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, running out of the tunnel, that preseason game, it was kind of a freeing feeling, you know, because I knew – it was like uh, just in a culmination of feelings, everything that happened, you know, for me to even get there. Um, it was kind of a God thing, you know. So for me, it was just, I'm going to go out there and play, you know. And uh, that was an experience that I hadn't felt in a long time, you know, because you're in this NFL stadium. Um, we were under the lights that game. Um, 
it was it was really hard to explain. Um, but I was sitting there on the bench before the the kickoff, and I'm thinking, man, like I'm this isn't regular season game, but this is <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I'm chasing that dream. Right. You dream what you're laying in the grass as a kid, looking up in the sky, like man, what do I want to be one day? Man, I want to be a football player. You know, <laughs> and I just think back to those times and uh, being able to actually be out on that field and and uh, <clears throat> And make that dream, you know, come true is is something special. So uh, that's awesome, Max. I know you're a veteran this year, but it wasn't that long ago when you were a rookie. Uh, so tell us about you know that experience of you know going out there for the first time. What it meant to you? Yeah, and I think mine is even uh, more unique. So uh, our first preseason game uh, was in Green Bay, and that's where I grew up. So oh. uh, I was. I, was, I, ran out, I ran out onto the field and there was a full section of white shirts that like had my name or face on them or something. And they were right above our bench and there was 200 of them right there. And right when they saw me run out of the tunnel, the whole thing just went crazy. And I mean, it was a pretty good game and it was wow. one of those things where I grew up a Packers fan, obviously, because I was, I don't know, seven miles down the road to my house. I mean, you, I drove by it every day on the way to high school. Like, wow. So the, the fact that I got to play, even if it was preseason, my first NFL game in that stadium, uh, hey. it was, it was the most surreal, surreal feeling I think I've, I've ever been a part of because I mean, that's just what dreams are made of. I mean, <laughs> you can't write a script better than that. So. Well, well, first of all, I, I want to thank all you guys. I mean, this is, uh, this is awesome. I mean, to have you guys uh, talk to our fans, talk to Husky Nation, uh, is big. Um, we got to get more of our alumni, more of our NFL alumni to come back because it is a pride thing. Uh, I remember graduating, done playing, and, and couldn't wait to see what the Huskies was doing. And I think to, to have you guys keep coming back and, and talking to our young men uh, is only going to help us uh, as a program. Uh, I think we got some future pros coming in our program, and and uh, we'll add them to the list of NFL uh, alumni, NIU alumni, and and happy to have you guys. You know, a couple things to our fans: uh, Victor E. Bash auction. Uh, you know, make sure you log on uh, and check on that. Uh, more programming um, this week and next week. I think it's uh, this is a fantastic thing that the uh, athletic department is doing. Um, you can check on uh, YouTube. Uh, and support our student athletes. And I think that's the most important thing is uh, supporting NIU, NIU athletics, uh, and NIU student athletes. Um, and we need all your support. Go Huskies. Go Huskies. Hey, I'd like to say one more thing to Chad. Chad, tell your dad I said what's up. I will. I will. He trained me, he trained me for the combine when I was coming out of NIU. Yeah, so, I knew that. Bro, I knew that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, can, hey, congrats, fellas. Much success. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Go Huskies. Appreciate it. Take it easy. Go Huskies. Go